Hi, this is Bob Williams with Sifter Parson Service in Wesley Chapel, Florida. Today we're going to do a short presentation on how to assemble, disassemble, gasket, and shim a CS1 sifter. Randy Williams and DJ Williams and Tim Robinson are going to show you all the different parts of the sifter. Basically all the parts that you see setting on the floor here are what make up the CS1 sifter, which was originally made by the Ellis Chalmer Corporation, then by Farrell Ross, then by Bluffton, and several other people have owned it over the years. We've made a lot of modifications and improvements to a very old, tried and true sifter, and we'll show you some of them as we go through this. This is meant to be an instructional video, and hopefully we'll answer all your questions. In front of you, you see an upper spindle, which is what goes inside the bearing housing. And Randy, if you just point to them, that'd be great. Uh, the lower spindle, the bearing housing, and the four stabilizer assemblies. We're going to put the bearings on them and then bring them back outside here. And we have the spider base, which holds up the bottom of the sifter. One thing on the spider base, this is precision machine so that it's designed to sit perfectly flat on a flat floor. If one leg of that spider base is high or low, it's going to throw the sifter out of its proper shimming. The other big X-frame is what goes on top of the sifter and like the spider base is precision machined and both pieces are stress relieved so that they'll stay accurate uh, so long as they're mounted on a very flat surface. So we're going to go inside and show you how the bearings go on so we'll take a break here. We've got the upper spindle in the bottom of the upper spindle we've got three plugs and those three plugs are designed, grab a tool over there, Ryan, so that if you ever have to take the bearing off, you can put three bolts or a fixture such as this in and press the bearing off. Uh, the three plugs just block the holes. First thing we're gonna do is put on the Thrust collar, that's good. Okay, we're gonna put on the thrust collar. Uh, then we're gonna take the bearing which has been pre-greased. We're gonna put some grease in the bottom of the spindle. Okay, what we're gonna do now is grease the bearing. We've already greased the bottom of the upper spindle. We put the thrust collar in place. Now this bearing has to be pressed on. If you're rebuilding the sifter and the bearing comes off real easy, you need to have a new upper spindle. Uh, this bearing has to be a press fit, otherwise it'll spin on the spindle. It should be put on with a 10 or 12 ton press. And what we do is just start it And we'll take it over to the press. And Randy will line that up and press it down. And then immediately put on the snap ring to hold it in place. And it'll, it'll press on very smoothly. It uh, takes about 10 tons of pressure. Then we'll put on our snap ring. And our upper spindle will be ready to go in the machine. If you're rebuilding a sifter, you want to make sure you take that snap ring off before you try and press the bearing off or the bearing will not come off the shaft. Now we'll take the lower spindle, 
We've already put a 90 degree grease fitting in the lower bearing. We're going to loosen the two set screws that are in the collar that secures the lower bearing to the lower spindle. So we're actually putting this bearing on, it slides right on. It now becomes the base bearing on the sifter. We're tightening the two set screws up so that it won't move on the shaft and it locks it in place. Very important that those be tightened up securely. You don't have to tighten up so much that you break a, an Allen wrench off, but you just want it to, to be very snug. This bearing is a floating bearing. It's designed to compensate for a little movement in the bottom wheel. We're going to insert the key. And then since we're in a nice air conditioned shop, we're going to put the filler ring into the bearing housing. The filler ring is nothing but a piece of plastic that takes up space in the bearing housing. And what it does is it eliminates you putting in an extra tube of grease. A couple changes we've made to the bearing housing since the sifter was last redesigned. Uh, we now have a bearing plug that has a grease fitting in it, so it greases right to the upper bearing instead of pumping in it all the way from the bottom. And we also have a half inch taper that is put in so that you can start the bearing very smoothly and uniformly without getting it cocked. So now we're going to move back outside and assemble the sifter. Okay, what we're going to do now is we've got the upper wheel turned upside down. The two inch weight is in place. We're going to take the bearing housing with no bearings in it and we're going to mount it into the upper wheel. We're going to mount it so the bearing plug hole is 180 degrees from the two inch weight. That puts it in the right position. Now we're going to screw in these with the bearing housing bolts. They're designed to come flush to the top of the wheel. You don't want to put in longer bolts otherwise you'll have a wearing problem on the bottom of your spindle. You don't want anything to rub. We designed this so you can take a socket, put it on the bottom of the holes, and tighten them up with an impact gun. All the holes line up all the way around. And then we're going to put in a bearing housing plug. And that has a grease fitting right in it. That's a change in design because what it does is it delivers the grease right to the upper bearing. The previous design, the grease had to be pumped up all the way from the bottom. <clears throat> Okay, now we're going to grease the bearing once again. We're going to lay the wheel down.
Now with that half inch recess, the bearing will slide right in for the first half inch and it'll be perfectly lined up to be driven in. It is a driven fit. When you take it apart, if you're rebuilding the system,